creating textures that you can use on your videos is not that complicated. All you need is a little bit of a, an idea and then just try things out. So in this case, the first thing we're gonna need is, you can use pretty much any technique that you can think of. In this case, you can see this one right here. I can't see much of it right now. This one, this one right here has a bunch of like scratches that I did with like a cutter on these paper. I don't know what you call this paper. And then for this one, I actually used paint. So you can pretty much use anything. So let me show you what the process is. First of all, the first step is to create your textures. So use whichever medium you want to do this. After you have created all your textures, jump into DaVinci and let me show you the first, I guess, the basic method that you would probably use and that is without creating a macro. And all you have to do in this case is grab the pictures that you have and then just create a sequence for these and then save them as a video. That is probably the easiest way to do this. I'm gonna set this up to the limit and then you will just add like, let's say three or four frames for this one and then just mix a bunch of textures right here. Now, if you've already set up the size on this one, you can press Control C and then Alt V and then just paste all the video attributes and then you have this one. Now go a few frames forward again and do the same for a couple of textures. So we have these right here and that works already for something. We can just copy these, you can just create a compound clip and if you want, you can modify all of the other ones. So it's not just the same always, but we can just create a compound clip and then just write texture. And then if you set this up on top of any other clips, you can use this as an overlay, maybe. And it has already an effect. Now, in this case, you can actually just use this, this speed button right here and you already have this transition. So that is a pretty basic use of it. Now, you can also use these type of looping things for backgrounds, right? So if you have a background, uh, if it looks like this too much, it might be a little bit mm, not that great, I guess, unless you're really going for that style. But if you want it to be in the background and not attract too much attention because you put maybe like some text on top of it, let's see, like these maybe. You can have that you can have something like that as well and then in this case you can just make this even darker if you don't want it to be that noticeable it works as well now the only thing is that if you do it with this method that you're just leaving it as a, as a video or a compound clip that you render then you don't have that much control of a bunch of things if you want to modify it you have to go into it and just it takes too much time so that's why i decided to put together a couple of generators that basically save you a ton of time from having to repeat these process and allow you to have a different variation of the looping of the texture every single time that you use it. So let me show you what they are like. There are three different textures. We have the brushes, textures, and then we have the scratches. Okay, so when you drag and drop one of these onto your video, you can actually cut these anywhere you want as well. Nothing will happen. You have the the looping of the different textures happening like this. Now, in this case, if I press random seed, it moves around and it changes the selection, right? And here, if you choose the frame repeat one, let's say, then it will just jump really, really fast. If you, if you change these to, let's say five, then it will be a little bit slower. So it takes five frames for it to jump into the next picture. Now we have a couple of things right here, like the number, which is the actual number of pictures that show up because they use a particle to build these. We have the lifespan that you can use to modify the duration of it as well. And then you have the lifespan variance, which allows you to make these a little bit more interesting as well, because it gives you an extra touch of randomness. Now, the only thing with this one that I haven't figured out yet is that sometimes it goes black because it chooses the lifespan variance zero as well, right? So then it just stays black like that and then the other one will still show up. So that's something that can happen sometimes, but it's something that I'll probably figure out later on as well, how to prevent it from being zero. And then we have the size in this case, they're all big because we have the rotation variance. If I make this smaller, you'll see how what it's looking like. 
if I press play, we can see these happening right here and it's set at one. So it's only one. If I set the life span to four, we can see how they are working. So they're all jumping one on top of the other like that. Okay. Now the way to make these work is by using the settings right here. I didn't add a media viewer inside the fusion composition because that would have made the effect a lot heavier and using the composite mode in the edit page is going to make it uh, work faster just in that in this case right here we can change this to add or any other composite mode and then if i set the size again to one we can see how it looks like that and then i could just make this smaller if i want to use it as a transition like an overlay transition we can actually reseed these so it's a different picture used and you can actually stack these or stack these with another type like that. And then you can also change the overlay mode of the second one as well. So that it adds a little bit of an extra touch to what you're work, what you're doing right here. So yeah, that is basically how it works. Now, earlier today, I decided, okay, let me try something out. So this generator, I'm going to open this in Fusion. So on this generator, you can open this infusion and do a bunch of stuff. What I did here is, well, first of all, when you open a generator, it will look like these, just the media out and the grunge generator right there. And it will just be looping, but you do have the different settings that you can change right here. You can reseed these again so that we don't have that pause that happens right there. So all you have to do is select these at a media in opening this infusion now make sure the media in is set to background right here so press ctrl t on this merge node and on this media in set the media source to background now we can change this merge node to be any of the composite modes or apply modes right here and similar to the edit page but i thought it would be really cool if i added a displacement node and see what that ended up looking like so i added a displace node right here and then i connected these on top so the grunge texture is basically what causes the displacement right here so if i go to the offset section you can move this a little bit and then use the refraction strength and we can see how it's already adjusting itself like that so you can also change the refraction channels right here but if you do go to alpha then it will just be black right here so it's not going to really be affecting it okay and then that is basically how you can make these look a little bit more interesting because it adds a little bit of a, another touch to the actual video. So if you're working with music videos, probably this could look interesting. So if we just press play right here, then it, it adds a little bit more movement. And here I stacked these twice. And I really liked the way that this one ended up looking, the way that the effect looked. Now in the post, I mentioned that it will look really interesting if I played around with it rgb values right here so if i did that that looks really cool right like so on the displacement if you use only if you use only one of the color channels right here then you have another layer of interesting things that you can add or effects that you can mix this up so it looks a little bit more interesting that is what the grunge tool there are three different tools in one basically and each one has like there's one that has, let me see, <clears throat> one is built with 19 textures. The other one is built with 24 textures, 28 actually. And then the other one is 24. So I use a loader node and a bunch of stuff uh, to build these. And these are the values that you can change in the settings and then experiment from there. Now, what will be the price for these if you want to get it? Actually, I, I was thinking about making these just 10 bucks. Might be too cheap, but my hope is that a lot of you guys want these and that a lot of you guys get these. So that's why I'm pricing it at that. It will be a pricing experiment. If not enough, if it's, there's no interest, I'm just gonna raise it again to like 20 or something. So it's similar to the other tools that I have. But if a lot of you guys like these, then you can just get it for 10 bucks on the Suave websites. That is it for this video. You've learned how to build your own textures so that you can use a looping texture on your background or videos or as a transition and then you've also learned about what you can do with the grunge generator 
I guess you can call this toolkit, but yeah, the grunge generators that I've created for you to use in DaVinci Resolve. So let me know what you think. I love to hear your thoughts and read the comments. So let me know down in the comments if there's something that I should add to it or just remove from it maybe, or if, that is, or if there's a different texture style that you would like me to create and then add that to the generators as well as a different variation. That is it for this video. I hope I'll see you in the next one here in Saudi. Bye.